to welcome uh, everyone to Provincial Day of the 2010 uh, Diplomatic Forum. Uh, I'd like to recognize all of uh, the ambassadors and high commissioners uh, who have traveled to, to be with us today and to let you know that it is a, it is a uh, distinct pleasure uh, to uh, welcome so many people representing so many countries uh, from around uh, the world. Uh, in brief, though, this morning, I'm just going to give you a little bit of our history and, and an overview. Uh, but I truly believe that uh, Prince Edward Island is a magnificent spot to live, work, and play. Uh, and we enjoy a uh, unique uh, spot uh, on the world stage. Uh, as a province in Canada, we are a full partner in the confederation of this great country. And therefore, we derive all the benefits of a unique jurisdiction within a wonderful country. In comparison to uh, many of the states that you represent, though, we are an extremely young country and young province. However, Canadians in general, and Islanders in particular, are extremely proud of our home, our culture, and our history. And as Premier of the smallest province in a great country, I regularly count the blessings bestowed upon us by all the efforts of many generations of Canadians from all over the world. Because Prince Edward Island is small, we must look outwards and I believe this contributes to a deep understanding and respect for all that a wider world has to offer. In keeping with that outward uh, looking view, Islanders have consistently and vigorously supported those initiatives designed to build stronger ties between cultures while maintaining a profound sense of an island identity. Les premiers habitants de l'île du Prince Édouard, les Mi'kmaq, ont vécu ici depuis des milliers d'années. Il avait nommé l'île Abagwet, souvent traduit librement par Terre bercée les vagues. Ces gens ingénieux construisaient des wigwams et des canons avec de l'écorce de bouleau et vivaient des produits de la terre. Jacques Cartier a découvert l'île du Prince Édouard en 1534. Il a probablement été visité fréquemment par des pêcheurs français et basques dans les années 1600. En 1720, une colonie française permet, euh, permettante a été fondée. Ces colons ont nommé l'île Île Saint-Jean. De nos jours, ce peuple se nommait les Acadiens. En 1758, les Britanniques ont pris possession de l'île. Ils ont ensuite rebaptisé l'île du Prince-Édouard. Les premiers colons européens sont pour la plupart arrivés de l'Écosse, de l'Angleterre et de l'Irlande. Beyond our proud Mi'kmaq origins and our active French Acadian community, our strong British roots, Prince Edward Island has a diverse population. In fact, my own family uh, came here from Lebanon. In recent years, we have grown uh, our uh, immigrant community quite a bit with a strong Chinese, Korean, uh, Middle Eastern community uh, having grown uh, in Prince Edward Island to create more cultural diversity and to grow our economy. One matter of special pride on Prince Edward Island, though, is our status as the birthplace of Canadian Federation. In fact, uh, in 2014, we'll have the opportunity to celebrate uh, the 150th anniversary of the Charlottetown Conference of 1864. Uh, one aspect of our provincial e evolution, which is now uh, accelerating, of course, as I mentioned earlier, uh, is a diversifying economy, which is becoming increasingly international. Our economic cornerstones that I mentioned, agriculture, fisheries, and tourism, are now growing in tandem with biosciences, aerospace, renewable energy, and information technology. As a government, we recognize the opportunities of a changing world, and we are taking steps to maximize our advantage. Unlike some of our larger partners in the Canadian Federation, we do not have vast natural resources, such as timber, minerals, or oil. But we are fortunate to have a population that is extremely loyal to our beautiful province and who want to excel in the wider world. Therefore, we have invested heavily in educational programs right from early childhood to post-secondary education because we believe our investment must belong with our people. And in turn, our investments in bioscience, agriculture, and fisheries technologies 
aerospace and other sectors offer new opportunities to an increasingly well-educated population. In 2008, the province exported nearly 20% of our gross domestic product to the United States, the European Union, and to Asian markets. These exports illustrate the combination of traditional and knowledge-based economies in Prince Edward Island. Our exports include everything from French fries, seafood, aquaculture, canola, peat, and snack food, to pharmaceuticals, medicine manufacturing equipment, aerospace products, and power transmission equipment. And in spite of the global economic downturn, Prince Edward Island performed remarkably well. In fact, we were the only province to avoid an economic contraction in 2009, and reasonable economic growth is expected in the current year. Uh, given our history, we are always interested in exploring new markets for trade, and the government of Prince Edward Island has a long record of supporting new trade opportunities. Nous avons constaté des changements dans la façon dont l'économie mondiale affecte les économies locales. Des changements se, se sont aussi produits au niveau de la relation entre l'économie et les questions environnementales. L'île de Prince Edward a fait preuve de leadership en matière de durabilité de l'environnement, surtout en ce qui concerne l'énergie renouve renouvelable. In 1980, before wind energy became the fastest growing source of electrical generation, Prince Edward Island opened the Atlantic Wind Test Site at the western tip of Prince Edward Island. The site has played an important role in the development of wind energy, helping manufacturers evaluate and improve their technologies. Recently, the site has expanded and evolved into a not-for-profit business called the Wind Energy Institute of Canada. It constitutes, it continues to be Canada's premier facility for wind research and development. Five other wind farms have also been developed since this time, and Prince Edward Island is a leader uh, in North America in the fact that currently 20% of our domestic electrical generation comes from wind, and we're about to increase that to 30%. Through the course of this morning, you will learn much, much more as I said about our agriculture industry. In fact, Prince Edward Island is the largest grower of potatoes in Canada. We grow approximately 80 to 85,000 acres, uh, with 60,000 of those acres uh, being used uh, in the French fry uh, industry. Our fisheries uh, is a huge industry. Uh, we uh, catch uh, one, uh, around 20 million pounds of lobster per year. Uh, we are a huge uh, player in the oyster uh, and mussel uh, industry as well. Uh, our tourism product uh, is also extremely strong. Uh, we uh, probably have around a million visitors a year to our province. Uh, we're very fortunate to have the Confederation Bridge, uh, which is the longest uh, freestanding structure over ice, I believe, uh, in the world. Uh, we're hoping to grow these industries of agriculture, fisheries, uh, and tourism, uh, but uh, we also believe that we need to expand our economy, as I talked about earlier. Uh, and that's why uh, we have uh, such a strong aerospace industry. We have an aerospace industry here. It's in Summerside, in the western part of our province. And really, it was an initiative of uh, the federal and provincial governments uh, that back in 1988, uh, we had an Air Force base in that area. The federal government closed it down, and we were able uh, to uh, transform it in uh, to an aerospace uh, industry that is doing extremely well today. I'm definitely uh, looking forward uh, to you folks having the opportunity to hear from uh, our different departments. I'm looking forward uh, to our dinner this evening, uh, and I want to thank you all uh, for coming to Prince Edward Island for this and invite you all back uh, for personal visits uh, to our province. Uh, thank you very much for your time this morning.